Do this and he will regret losing you. In this video, we will address what to do when he seems to pull back and lose interest and really bring him back closer to you. Hey, I'm Antje Boyd with Magnetize Your Man and together with my husband Brody, we've been helping thousands of successful women all over the world to get the loving, committed and long-term relationship that they desire fast. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that makes him regret, regret losing you is you transforming yourself. You see, what happens is that he thinks he knows where you are, who you are, what your wounds are, what your patterns are. And so because of that, he can start to take you for granted because whatever we can predict can become a little, let's call it, boring. So I'll give you an example. When I was dating this guy, like back in Germany, you know, I was actually like not really, you know, focusing on my own personal development. I was giving a lot of my power away. As a matter of fact, when I met him, I was like, he's my husband, which by the way, I always joke with that. But, you know, we have like so many women when I always say, hey, if you meet this guy and you say, you know, this one is my husband, you already know this is not going to go anywhere right? Because our experience actually is that you're usually not that super excited. You're in interested, but you're not like super excited to uh, potentially see a future with your man when you originally meet him because he has a more secure attachment style. And when you're watching this video, you're probably more attracted to a man who's more avoidant, who's more dismissive, or who's potentially more abusive because that's the experience that you had in your childhood. Now back to transforming yourself. So what happened back then was that, um, like I said, I was giving all my power away. And but then I left, I went to the US. Now I'm not saying that you have to leave your country in order to transform yourself. But I actually went to the US and I was throwing myself into workshops and personal development and healing myself. And lo and behold, when I back to went back to visit um, Germany, and I ran into this guy again. And by the way, just had a meeting with him to close the chapter, which is kind of really funny, because it was really just something to say, hey, I forgave you. Um, but I also hold you accountable for you're, you're not showing up, you're being disrespectful, for you breaking my heart, and all of these things. But when I did that, this guy, lo and behold, fell back in love with me. And why was that? Now, I believe a huge reason was because I was actually working on myself. So I was no longer this old version that he used to date. So he's like, wait a minute, who is this person? Who's this empowered person who just holds me accountable, who shows her emotions and who totally throws me for a spin and causes a state change inside of my nervous system? Now, whether he actually said that consciously or unconsciously, doesn't really matter because the reality is that he pursued me. Now, long story short though, you know, I obviously realized that he wasn't obviously the right person for me, but because I transformed myself, when you transform yourself, like he will indeed regret losing you. The next thing that will make him regret losing you is you surprising yourself. See, it's really interesting, right? Like, you know, you can't really say fake it until you make it because a lot of men can sense that you're just doing it to get the man back. So in other words, you're actually attached to the outcome, right? The outcome being that he calls you again, that he sends you a text message again, that he tells you, you know, how much, what he feels about you again and again. And so whatever he did in the very beginning, when the fire was burning and both of your hearts full of passion and full of excitement, right? But it's not going to really work this way. It only works if you authentically shift yourself. Now, how in the world do you do that? Let me give you an example. One way how I surprise myself is learning how to public speak. Now, just a quick uh, note on the side, I actually almost failed my chemistry class. Maybe it was my biology class um, because I froze in front of the class when I had to give a presentation. 
Now, I'm sure we all have these stories of like how uh, in a horrible, traumatic high school experience where the classroom potentially laughed at you. Now, this was the case for me. Now, as you can, of course, imagine that I said, you know, public speaking is not exactly on the priority list for me because I would have to face my fear to be be belittled, to be embarrassed, to be um, laughed at, to feel ashamed, and so on. So of course, like nobody's just gonna say, oh, hey, let me just put myself in a position where I could feel like my most vulnerable, um, and most insecure moment again. However, when I started to learn public speaking when I came to US, because I felt like it's really helpful for me to learn actually proper English, how to present myself when I actually take like a public speaking class. It was called Toastmaster. Um, now, Toastmaster is international, so you may have it in your country as well. And it basically gives you different prompts to practice your speech, and then you get feedback from a group. Now, I remember this one day. I was actually competing in, uh, for some division, for some table topic or something like that. I forgot exactly. If you have done Toastmasters, you may <laughs> notice potentially um, those particular terms. But table topics basically means that you don't know what you're going to be talking about. Like you're just going to get a topic and then you have to talk about it. If I remember correctly. If you're a Toastmaster, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but anyways, so I was like, wow, I was driving and I was like, I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm, I'm more or less going to surprise myself because I don't know how the audience is going to respond. I don't know what I'm actually going to have to talk about. I think you have a little bit of time to prepare, but it's definitely at the meeting. So you can't like take it, go home. That's not table topics, right? It's like literally you get something, have a couple minutes and then you have to go. It's almost like improv, which by the way, if you're scared to do something, be in the uncertainty, learn to want to learn how to be a little bit more flexible. Improv is like an amazing, amazing way to practice that, to step out of your unknown, step out of the unknown, um, and also step more into doing something different and surprising yourself. Now, because I was surprising myself, I was also increasing sort of like my attraction factor, which was a nice side benefit I wasn't planning on. And I found a lot more people were attracted to me. Men were attracted to me because I, I didn't even know who I was. I was reinventing myself. So therefore, they couldn't really predict who I was. And so therefore, it was still interesting. It was still intriguing. So maybe you can think about yourself and think about, well, what... What could I do to surprise myself, to do something different, to step outside of my comfort zone? Now, the next thing that makes them regret losing you is you balancing the different versions of you. The reality is we have different energetic versions of us inside of ourselves. For example, we could have like a motherly part that's of course able to mother people. We can also have like a total badass warrioress part who just gets the job done. And you might find yourself like nodding your head right now. Yes, that's me. <laughs> um, or maybe you have like that little girl part inside of you that's just really playful and just really silly and makes some jokes and um, is spontaneous in any way, shape or form or likes to dress in a certain fun way or is musically inclined in a certain way, whatever the case may be. So you maybe have that part inside of you very much expressed. You may have the more sensual part inside of you. Maybe you like to take things a little slower. You like to take a moment to stop, to smell the roses, to maybe feel like a gorgeous lotion on your skin. But you're just really sort of in the sensual experiencing your world. That's a different version of you. You may be like full of fire and you may be more on the primal side and you like you can go into sort of this animal version of you where you can let go of what's reasonable or what's logical and you can just let your body talk for itself so there's all the different versions of us 
Now, the truth is that we have them expressed to different degrees inside of ourselves. So, for example, if you were expressing, let's say, that animal version of yourself when you were little, but then your parents were like very rigid, were telling you, well, that's not going to happen in this household. In this household, we're going to follow the rules. We're going to do things that are mature. In this household, we're focusing on education and accomplishment. And we're not going to go into sort of what's unreasonable or illogical or irrational. That's, we're not going to do that in this house. We're growing up relatively fast here. And then what happened is, if you grew up in that kind of household, is that you were potentially belittled or made fun of, even if you're wearing just like something fun. If you were expressing, let's say, even like that little girl part inside of yourself. So because of the upbringing that we go through, and of course, I could bring so many different examples of kinds of childhoods that you could have grown up in, but because you were growing up in a certain highly critical environment, at least that's been true for the thousands of women that have come to us over the years, is that like you're stifling, you're suffocating certain versions of yourself because the approval of your parents, your mom, your dad, and now your environment is more important to you. Now, if he loses interest in you, if you find him pulling back, it may be because you're not fully self-expressed. So he may lose interest because you hit potentially a plateau. And a plateau just really means you're not expressing all of who you are. You kind of become predictable. It becomes kind of gray. You kind of lose that color, the different expressions. And why is that? Because you don't want to take a risk. You don't want to be rejected. You don't want to be made fun of or you don't want to feel stupid and so on. And then because of that, you stop expressing yourself. And so what I'm saying here is identifying which versions of myself have I potentially stifled inside of myself. And again, good way to find out is go into your childhood and see what got criticized. Now, another and fantastic way to figure that out is what do you judge in another woman? If you see out of the sudden a woman being sort of flamboyant, wearing a lot of colors, being fully self-expressed, like maybe laughing really loud, then you may know, oh, I have that particular part of me stifled because I got belittled or maybe I was one out of six kids and it didn't really matter. It was just kind of, it is what it is and your parents don't really care how you express yourself, if you express yourself, or maybe your younger sister always got, the, you know, the priority, got always got the attention and so on. So again, many different reasons why this could occur, but those are two good, good starting points for you to explore which version of you that you have you suppressed inside of your self and then find a way to express that in a way I brought some examples today on how to do that when you do that he will be surprised he'll be like set back he'll be like wait who is this where is this coming from this is interesting let, let me call you again let me let me did I miss something right so he'll have sort of like this missing out he's like maybe I don't know this whole woman maybe there's more to explore wow how amazing is that and the cool thing also about that is by the way because monkey see monkey do is that in his nervous system he'll be like wait a minute maybe there's parts inside of myself that i have stifled so now he feels more alive he feels more this life force energy as moving through his body he feels a new sense of potential purpose and, and connection to you. The next thing that makes a man regret losing you is getting yourself internally back aligned. Sometimes when men leave, it's because they feel conflicted. There is a past conflict inside of themselves. They felt like, wait a minute, when I met this woman, she was this like incredibly confident woman and she was like resourceful and self-sustained and all of these things and secure. 
And as time went on, out of the sudden, she became very insecure. Out of the sudden, she needed to get approval from me all the time. Or out of the sudden, she became apologetic and started texting more. And if I didn't text back right away, meaning the man, then she texted again. And now the man is confused. I'm like, wait a minute. Who are you? Why is that the case? Is because you have a past conflict inside of yourself. Now, a confused mind says no. So the man is going to be like, well, let me, let me kind of figure this out. Let me kind of like back off a little moment and see what's going on. And of course, he gets distracted and so on. Somebody else has a more clear, aligned energy. He's going to be attracted to that. So it's not necessarily personal to you. It's more the conflict. So now the question is, how in the world do you align those conflicting parts inside of yourself? So you may want to know what I have found out after working the thousands of women all over the world, no matter the age, the stage, whatever the case may be, whether they were single their whole life, whether they were married three times, whether they're widowed, is that there's usually two parts that are in conflict. One part is that part inside of you that, of course, once you have the deep, connected, long-term, flourishing, nourishing, connected relationship and potential marriage. Of course, that's why you're here. Otherwise, why in the heck would you waste your time? However, what could be the case is that it's competing with that part inside of you that wants to protect you. Now, in NLP, we call that the protector guardian guardian protector and that part will put on the brakes big time that part usually is the one that rains on your parade that part makes you say the wrong thing that part goes into full-on self-sabotage where you out of the sudden say I hear, what, why did I just say that? I don't even understand. I don't know what happened. Or I don't know why it just blew up out of the sudden at this guy who was so nice to me, uh, whatever the case may be. And this part usually comes up when you hit the unknown, when you hit a moment of uncertainty. So maybe something shifts where maybe he had a long day at work and he didn't text you back right away how he normally does it. Or, or maybe he just got stressed, something internally happened, emotionally happened, whatever the case may be. But for some reason or another, the dynamic slightly shifted. And then it, it reminded you of that insecure part inside of yourself that, of course, was instilled in you when you were a little girl that makes you react from a place of defense mechanism, uh, from a shame shield going into attack, uh, whatever the case may be. And so from that point on, unfortunately, it's a downward spiral because now you have shame. Now you justify it more. The man is going to feel more confused. He's like, what is going on? She's not feeling even like she's in her body anymore. So we want to find a way to bring those two parts together. But you want to make sure that that part that wants to have the deep connected long-term relationship and the part that wants to protect you are making a deal so to say, right? That they're sort of becoming friends. They don't have to be best friends, you know, BFFs. Um, but that they have some sort of level of compromise to work together as opposed to like completely fighting each other to for nail because then you just go into this crazy eight and you like in and out, right? Like you're in a relationship, you're out of a relationship, in a relationship, out of a relationship and so on. Right. And, and you could do this for like decades. I sometimes women come to me in their 30s because they say, I'm done. I'm sick and tired of this. I have women come to me in their 60s and they're like, well, well, I did the crazy eight uh, for three marriages and now I have finally enough. So whenever you have enough, whenever you have reached your your threshold, your ceiling, uh, that's when you say, you know what, like enough is enough. I'm going to bring those two parts together and do something different. And the next thing that makes a man regret losing you is becoming unapologetic. Now, you could also call it owning your shadow, but it's a little bit more of a complicated concept. So becoming unapologetic. So a couple of years ago, and you may have heard that story before, I was dating this guy that was obviously before I met my husband, Brody. And he told me one night that I hugged too much or kissed too much or whatever the case may be. And I was really unapologetic about it. 
I literally didn't say anything. I said, okay, it's kind of like you just told me that I have blonde hair or if you have brown hair or whatever, you know, just as if your man just told you what hair color you have. You're like, okay, like, I guess I'm supposed to say thank you or something. right? It's just, it's just, you're unapologetic. You're like, yeah, I mean, this is me. I'm affectionate. And, and uh, as opposed to fighting it. Now, Brené Brown talks about the three shame shields. Now, oftentimes why men actually distance themselves in the first place is because you entertain those three shame shields. Now, the first shame shield is being totally apologetic, right? It's like completely collapsing and completely saying, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I should have been more aware of like, you know, your needs around, you know, touch and you know, like, tell me how would, how much would you like to be hugged or what would be appropriate? I, I really apologize. I mean, I didn't want to overwhelm you. So you're going to just completely like apologizing for yourself, which is, of course, so sad because as I'm doing this, I literally feel that little girl inside of you, as we talked about the different versions of you, crying because she's saying, I don't get to be myself. I, I get to be shoved in a corner and, and be like, you know, I have to deny myself which is the next shame shield, which is about denial. Now, denial is even worse because that would be saying, oh, no, 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 it was a total joke. I'm normally not that affectionate. You know, actually, I'm like, I don't even like affection, to be honest with you. I don't even really like hugs. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm not even really a kisser. I mean, I never really, you know what I mean, never been into this. So I, I totally agree with you. But that would be denial, which is even like worse because, again, so much sadness inside of yourself where you're disappointing yourself and interesting enough you know what's so interesting is you think okay i'm gonna i'm willing to disappoint myself makes me so sad just like reflecting on that that uh, because i think you know that will make the other person like me and be more attracted to me and love me the way i always wanted to be loved however nothing could be further from the truth Right, the quality of men that we attract into our life is directly proportional to the relationship we have to ourselves. So when you disappoint yourself, he will disappoint you because you're handing him a resume. He's like, please disappoint me because I'm disappointing already myself. I'm already denying myself. So please disappoint me um, because that's already what I'm doing with myself, which I assume is not what you want to do. Now, because of that, there's this third version, which is also not a great version, but it's a different kind of version, which is the third shame shield, which is attack. And in that case, you're like, well, who do you think you are, right? Like, do you think you're Mr., you know, you can make all the requests and, you know, so you kind of would go into a sarcasm and you would go into sort of, you know, um, you know, making sure you feel superior, making sure you feel powerful and of course even though that makes you feel powerful so you may not be potentially disappointing yourself because you're totally advocating for yourself but because of that you actually because you're going to attack you're still coming from a place of reaction so you're still believe it or not actually giving your power away it's so crazy because you think you're keeping your power but you're actually giving your power away and on top of that you're losing connection you're losing intimacy, you're losing trust. And unfortunately, I've seen this so many times with incredibly beautiful, successful women who use that particular shame ship with men. And again, it's just, it makes me almost cry because they have wonderful opportunities. But because they harden their heart in that moment, they become harsh. I said, you know, it's more important to me to feel powerful, to feel superior, tend to feel helpless and powerless. I'm mean, going to go into attack. And when you go into attack on a regular basis, you eventually emasculate the man. And then he's going to leave anyways. Essentially, the name of the game here is how do you become true to yourself through different exercises. Because usually a man leaves when you're not true to yourself. Now, that's not always true because sometimes he's actually very true to himself and he's simply not attracted. But for the most part, it's because you're not true to yourself and he loses interest because he saw who you potentially were in the beginning 
and but you couldn't maintain that because you had you had you haven't sustained that within yourself because you still have the wounding from your childhood however the good news is once you stabilize that inside of yourself you actually cause more trust more connection more intimacy more curiosity in a man and he will come back next if you haven't yet take my free love quiz and my virtual coaching session to get to connected committed and long-term relationship you desire fast without loneliness trust issues and attracting emotionally unavailable men by simply hopping over to getlovequiz.com or simply click the link in the description or the comments right here so much fun filming this video for you hope this helps lots of love and i will talk to you soon Bye-bye.